Hi there! Today we're going to learn how to make a burning matte stick in Adobe Illustrator, so let's get started. I'm going to create a letter-sized document in Landscape and I'll change the color mode to RGB and hit Create. I'm going to grab the Rectangle tool and make a rectangle as illustrated. Next, I'm going to fill it with gradient and then double click on the right slider of the gradient to change the color to a yellowish shade. Something similar to a matte stick. Later, I'm going to add another slider in the center of the gradient and then double click on the left slider and try to fill it with a color similar to the one on the extreme right. Or you can even copy the color code of the slider on the extreme right. That should be fine as well. Now that we have our rectangle filled with the gradient colors of our choice, let's hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC and then paste it on front by hitting Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC. Now we have a copy pasted right on top of our original shape. So holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC Click on the anchor point in the center and drag it inward. And because we are holding Option or Alt, it will drag it from both the sides. Now with the rectangle on the top selected, go to the gradient option and change it to a dark brown color. So let's double click on the right slider and let's click on the burger menu on the right to change the color option to HSB and make the necessary adjustments to make it darker. And once we are satisfied with the color, let's change it back to RGB mode from the burger menu. We're changing it back to RGB mode so that we could copy the color code and paste it to the slider on the extreme left. Now copy the code in the bottom of the panel and then double click on the extreme left slider and then paste the code you've just copied. Next, click on the slider in the middle and change the color to dark brown, but slightly lighter than the brown used on both sides. We're doing this because we don't want the stick to have a uniform color like you find on match sticks. Next, let's select both the rectangles and go to Object and then Blend and click on Make. Now go back to Object and then Blend and Blend Options. And then in the pop-up menu, ensure that the spacing is set to specified steps and the number of specified steps to be 100 and hit OK. Now using the rectangle tool, make another rectangle of the same size as the smaller rectangle on top. It should by default have the gradient colors you used a while ago. So let it stay as it is and then hit Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC to make a copy of this rectangle and then hit Command F on a Mac or Control F on a PC to paste it on front. And much like earlier, hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and click on the anchor point in the center and drag it in to make it smaller as illustrated. Once this is done, select the rectangle you just copied the last rectangle from and change its opacity to 0%. Now you see this has become transparent because the opacity is zero and the smaller rectangle sitting on top of this has the brown gradient applied to it. So let's blend these two shapes by first selecting them and then go to object and then blend and click on make. Then go back to object and then blend and blend option to verify if the setting is set to specified steps and 100 steps. Then hit OK. Next, we need to make the match head. And for that, pick the ellipse tool and make a circle as illustrated. Now select both the stick and the head and then click on the stick once again so that we could center align the head to the stick using the alignment option on top. Now let's pick the direct selection tool and click on the circle and select the anchor point facing the stick and drag the point towards the stick as illustrated. Now pick the pen tool and click on the corner of the shape that you dragged to add an anchor point. You'll need to click on both sides to add anchor points on both sides. 
Using the direct selection tool, click and pull the anchor point back towards the head as illustrated. If you find the white space revealing itself between the head and the stick, just move the head a little to the left towards the stick. Now using the direct selection tool, click on the anchor points you've just made one by one and using the corner tool, convert them to corners as illustrated. Next, let's select the head of the mat stick and modify the gradient a bit and then using the gradient tool on the left, set it in a way that the beginning of the head is dark and the tip is lighter. Let's move on to adding a background to our image here. So let's click on the create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel and drag it to the bottom. And let's also rename it to background. Now using a rectangle tool, make a big rectangle covering one third of the artboard on the right and change its fill color to black. Now let's lock the background layer as its job is done. Have layer 1 selected and zoom in on the match head as we need to add a few pores to it. Pick the ellipse tool and make a circle and change its color to the light yellow color from the lighter shade of the head using the eyedropper tool. And then with the circle selected, hit command C on a Mac or control C on a PC to copy the circle. And then hit command F on a Mac or control F on a PC to paste it on front. Then holding Shift Option on a Mac or Shift Alt on a PC, reduce the size of the circle and fill this circle with the gradient we used with the stick. The gradient must still be there intact, so you shouldn't really have a problem with that. And then holding Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, spread a few copies around. Let's also make the burnt wood effect using the pen tool and color them dark brown. You don't have to necessarily make the burnt effect exactly like mine. Just imagine how a lighted matte stick would look like in that area and make some shapes that could look like wood burning. Now select these three sub layers that you've just created and drag them to the bottom of the head and pause so that the edges of the sub layers rest under them. Else they won't look good if they are sitting on top of the head. It's time to light of a matte stick here, so let's create another layer by clicking on the create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel and drag this layer between layer 1 and the background layer. Grab the ellipse tool and make a circle as illustrated. Change the color of the circle red. Next, use the direct selection tool and select the anchor point on top of the circle and click and drag it up as illustrated. Now use the selection tool and go to object and then create gradient mask and from the pop-up menu select five rows and four columns and hit OK. The next step is very important and might need a little bit of practice before you get this right. So using the direct selection tool, arrange the points in the order that you'll need to have yellow flames originating from the head and red flames surrounding them. So map your points out in that fashion. Now let's change the color of the mesh to black and from the opacity option, change the blend mode to screen. Next, using the direct selection tool, click on the point closer to the head and fill it with yellow color. And the surrounding points should be filled with red, like in an actual flame. Once we have our flame ready, let's add another layer by clicking on the create a new layer button at the bottom of the layers panel. And with this new layer selected, pick the pen tool and draw a shape similar to the shape of the flame which should look almost like a like a drop and then change its fill color to black now go to object and select gradient mesh and from the pop-up select five rows and four columns before hitting ok much like earlier arrange the points of the mesh using the direct selection tool so basically we're going to add more streaks of flames for a better effect and once our points are set, go to Transparency panel and set the Blend Mode to Screen. 
Now using the direct selection tool, pick the points of this new mesh and extend the yellow flame that we made earlier. Also add some red padding on the sides like in a real flame. We need to make it look more realistic and for that we need to have another shade of yellow which should be slightly lighter than the yellow we have already used. So pick the pen tool and trace around the head to make it look like a semicircle on top of the head. And then change the fill color to black. And then go to object and create gradient mesh. And let the rows and columns remain intact. Now let's use a shade of blue and fill the points right above the head. Mind you, the color is not going to stay blue once we change the blending mode to screen. It's going to turn to yellow, in fact, very light yellow. Once you're done with a semicircle, you don't really have to use all the points. Just fill the points as illustrated and then go to blending mode and select screen and you shall find another yellowish spark originating from the head giving it a natural look. You can make necessary adjustments now to the points for it to look believable. Next let's move on to the last part and that is creating smoke. So let's make another layer and lock the rest of the layers. Pick the rectangle tool and make a rectangle. Go to object and create gradient mesh. Select two rows and three columns before hitting OK. Now using the direct selection tool, select the two anchor points in the center at the bottom of the rectangle and fill them with a shade of blue and it should look something like this. Change its blending mode to screen. Now using the selection tool, place it on top of the flame. Pick the lasso tool and leaving the left two corners intact. Select the rest of the anchor points in the middle and the right. And with them selected, click on the rotate tool and move the rotate handle to the left of the rectangle that we haven't selected so as to lock that side of the rectangle. Now rotate the rectangle. So what we want is to have this smoke effect wrapped around the red flame. And at this point, we need to again select the lasso tool and this time select the four anchor points on the right, which should basically cover half of the rectangle. And then pick the rotate tool once again. And this time place the handle to the point just at the edge of the red flame so that when we rotate it this time, it should keep that point intact. Now using the direct selection tool, adjust the points to make them look believable. I have made another layer here and I'm going to pick the rectangle tool and make a rectangle vertically as well because I want some smoke effect on the left side of the flame as well. So with the rectangle selected, go to object and then create gradient mesh and change the rows to three and columns to three as well and hit OK. Let's also change the blending mode to screen. Now using the direct selection tool, fill the points on the left with a shade of blue. Much like earlier, use the lasso tool to select all the anchor points but the ones on the bottom of the rectangle and then use the rotate tool and lock the base of the rectangle by placing the handle and then rotate the rectangle. And arrange the points to give it another streak of smoke from the left and there you go, the lighted matchstick effect is ready. Alright guys, that concludes our session today. I hope you've enjoyed it and have learned something from it. So do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Until we meet again on Thursday, goodbye and thanks for watching.